morning everyone welcome to our devotion for this wednesday morning uh, we're going to continue where we left off yesterday looking at psalm 42 and yesterday we are looking at the whole issue of depression and how uh, we can overcome uh, despair and depression and we said that david if he was indeed the writer of the psalm uh, does a couple of things he first of all recognizes his depression and i think it's the first step to conquering depression he admits it both to himself and to god that he's in despair and then we said that he he rants before god he pours out the depths of his despair he's very specific he names the pain and doesn't try and hide it in any way i think we often told by therapists that in our feeling oriented culture feelings are neither right or wrong they just are what they are and so we need to get in touch with and accept our feelings if we defy our feelings or seek to conquer them by going against them, we, we are actually in denial. And yet there's a biblical response to feelings that we cannot ignore. The Bible calls it discipline. Discipline by definition means going against your feelings. I may not feel like exercising, but if I'm disciplined, I do it anyway. I may feel like spending uh, my money, but if I'm disciplined, I go against those feelings because I know I've got to live within my means. And so we need to acknowledge our despondency and pour out our souls to the Lord. And so as we continue with the psalm, the third thing that the psalmist does is that he remembers in verse 5 or 4 to 6. It says, These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. And so when you tempted to look back at the hurts of the past train yourself to to stop and and shift gears and call to mind the faithfulness of god in the past and some of the things that we need to do we need to remember god's goodness to us in the past secondly remember god's closeness to you in the present and then thirdly remember god's power available to you in the future let me just say those three things again remember god's goodness to you in the past remember god's closeness to you in the present and remember god's power that is available to you in the future somebody once said never doubt in the dark what god told you in the light victor edmund i love that that statement never doubt in the dark what god told you in the light Memories are a powerful force that connect us to the past and help shape our future. You may recall that song, Memories, by Barbara Streisand many years ago, which says that memories light the color of our minds. Our emotions are closely connected to our memories. Uh, Bruce Waltke said, Memory plays an important role in any society. Any society that hopes to endure must become a community of memory and hope. And so memories can do one of two things. They can either be a burden and, you know, kind of bring you to this heaviness of soul, or they can be a blessing. David says, therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan. Eugene Peterson writes, a Christian who has David in his bones, Jeremiah in his bloodstream, Paul in his fingertips and Christ in his heart will know how much and how little reliance to put on his own momentary feelings and the experience of the past week. I have several files of sermon notes and anecdotes and writings and poems and, and so on that span my whole Christian journey. And I find it so encouraging every now and again just to go back to those files, especially when I'm questioning God's presence, questioning his nearness, and I go back to those files and remind myself of the journey that he's taken me on. And so as I go through those notes from my devotions, for example, 10, 20, 30 years ago, it just reminds me of how far God has brought me and the road that he's taken me on, the way he's spoken to me at different stages of my life. They are like the memorial stones God commanded Joshua to set up on the banks of the Jordan at Gilgal before crossing over. And as I read them, I'm, I'm just filled with a deep sense each time of how gracious God has been and, and how he's blessed me on my journey. And so remembering is such an important way of 
breaking through these times of depression. Then the, the, the fourth way is to, is to rest in verse 5 and 11. Rest in God. Or in the words of, of the psalmist here, put your hope in God. What do we need to do? To rest in God is to trust in Him. Instead of heeding the throng of discouraging voices that surround him, David looks up to his God. If you look at verse 1 again, As the deer pants for the water, so my soul thirsts after you. It is in God that we find refuge. Instead of running from the presence of God, as we so often do when we get discouraged, David draws near to God. Long before James ever wrote, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. David was already practicing it. We so often stop coming to worship when we face discouragement. We so often stop reading his word and having our devotions. All the things that we should be doing, we stop. And we actually end up prolonging the heaviness of our souls and keeping ourselves from the, the cure of our, our soul's discouragement. And so we read, Lord, I feel such and such a way, but I know you're in control, is David's response. You're in control both in the day and in the night. Therefore, I come to you and I state my case. As we said, he raves and rants before God. So we read, put your hope in the God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Hope is not a vain feeling that perhaps something better might come. Rather, it is the certain expectation that God will act. Things looked pretty dark and bleak for David, and yet he was trusting God, knowing with full confidence that God could and would do all that he had said he would. In God's time, all his promises would be fulfilled, and everything would indeed work out for good. And so we need to hold on to scriptures like Paul uh, would say, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Uh, or when he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? He says, no, I tell you, in all these things we are more than conquerors. And then, of course, the verse that we love to quote from Romans 8.28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. And so, friends, I just urge you, if you are feeling uh, a time of depression, if you are experiencing the symptoms that we spoke about yesterday, then recognize that first of all, then rant before God, pour out your soul to the Lord. And then thirdly, remember, remember God's goodness in the past. Remember his presence right here today, his closeness today, and then know that his power will put you in good stead for tomorrow. Uh, I pray that we might just Go back to those things that we've written, things that we've reflected on in our past that will give us courage as we go forward. And then last of all, there's rest in him, rest in, in the knowledge that he is with you. Trust in him and uh, put your hope in him, as the psalmist says. And so I just urge us to take those four steps to try and conquer the scourge of depression and discouragement in our lives because we know the enemy tries to use that against us and i pray that as you do that you will be able to move out of that uh, uh, nosedive and avoid any crash in your life because your trust is in god and so let's turn to him at this time lord we just thank you for for david or whoever wrote this psalm the these words of encouragement to recognize uh, our state before you to rant before you to feel that we not feel that we can't do that but to open our hearts before you to pour out our hearts before you to then remember those times when we walked closely with you those times we came into your house and truly experienced your presence and to remind ourselves that we were not not faking it at that time that you were real even if now we might feel distant from you and then lastly, just to rest in you, Lord, just to, to trust you, to put our hope in you, to rest in you as the rock of our salvation. And so we just pray that we would heed these four steps as David did and that we would be able to pull out of that nosedive and, and be able to uh, rise up as, the, as, as an eagle does, as, as the prophet Isaiah said, that we might rise up in the wings of an eagle, that we may run and not grow weary and walk and not grow faint. And so bless us as we continue into this day, Lord, 
And may we just continue to fix our eyes on you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So bless you. Have another wonderful day. Whatever you've got planned for today, may God just continue to guide you and bless you. Amen.